Hello everybody, Sebastian Keynes here with another Watch Your Realms video. Today I'm going to be covering Gear Ray 2, which is one of the dungeons where you can get some very good artifact sets to beat the end game content. I like the sticks, uh, the set the most in this dungeon, especially for my mages. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the strategy for stage 18, but I think that this is applicable for stages 13 8 through 18. You, you're looking at this in between the mid game and the late game. And then you're going to get into the end game with the 19 through 21. So I'm doing this now to show you where I am or what I did. And before I start stripping things down and rebuild again to tackle the end game uh, stages. So here I'm going to be uh, showing you stage 18. And please note that I did turn the power of dominance off for this example, as I did not want it to influence the run at all. For this composition, if you have your legendaries, use your legendaries. They make the content a lot easier. So if you have Regulus, use Regulus. If you have Sadie, use Sadie. But for this example here, what I'm doing is I'm bringing in my uh, built Apex, except for SLD. I'm just using SLD here for the Lord boost. But I'm going to be using Wrath and Valka here. Valka, we can get her from the storyline. So she is easily accessible. Uh, as my, my fighters along with Abomination, which which can fuse them within the game. My healers here are going to be my Don Vortex, which are the HP base healers. So they are easy to keep alive for this content. And I'm also going to bring Nassanda here as a backup, uh, just to keep everything at bay uh, during the boss's uh, AoE damage hits. For the tanks, I'm actually, for this example, I'm using Baron. And Oleg. And the reason that I like them is because they have those shields, those extra shields that they can bring in for this battle and it keeps them alive a lot, uh, a lot longer. If you were able to do the assault diffusion and you have her built, she can take up one of the spots here uh, for Baron or Oleg if you need a tank uh, and don't have either one of these two. Uh, and then, of course, Wrath is going to be a damage dealer here as well. So let me continue on to show you the, the example of the run that I did here. My strategy is essentially going to be put in the tanks, put in the fighters on the side and get the heals going and keep them alive as long as possible. All right, so let's load it up. So for the first pounding that the boss is going to do, I'm gonna to try to keep it to three characters or three heroes. So here I am bringing Oleg, he's going to cover the left side and I'm going to protect him with my Dun. And I'm also going to say, okay, here's time to go in. And here comes in Wrath, and he is going to provide me protection that I need, or the damage that I need on the left hand side of this battle. So now that the boss is doing his uh, AoE uh, hits, that's when I use the ultimates to try to get the heals, try to get the protections as long as possible here. Now here in the second uh, stage of setting this up, now that we have to worry about the right hand side, now I'm filling up with the rest, I'm bringing in Vortex to provide more healing, Baron, and on this side here you'll see Volker. The nice thing about bringing Volka to this to this battle here is that she is tanky, and uh, she can actually and she provides for with her passive you can self heal when you do your basic attacks and you're doing damage right. So that's really handy to have here. Now as a backup here, I'm bringing in a Sande just to give us more healing and start protecting uh, the right flank here as much as possible along with Vortex. And here is when I'm bringing in Mary. So if you, if, you, if, if you are having a hard time sustaining, you can bring Mary to kind of just slow things down for you. For my run, she probably would not have been needed, but that's fine. So she's, she died, it's no big deal. Okay, so now here comes the boss, he's coming down. Now here's the thing that I decided to do here. All right, so I have uh, I have here I have Wrath. He is going to do some of the damage, but to help him out, I'm also going to bring in Abomination. 
Now here, here he is on the left side. He is going to be vulnerable, but I just want him to get a couple of hits in to bring the boss as quickly as possible. Okay. So he's doing damage, and yes, he's getting hit. But remember, he has that uh, invincibility um, passive that he uh, that, that, that he has that allows him to stay in the battle for a little uh, for a little while. And then Wrath does the rest. And Oleg is just standing right there protecting him. You saw Nasande and everybody else go down, which is fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, you just want to make sure that the left hand side of your uh, of the of the platform was your strongest because that's where the boss is coming down. And then as you as you notice there, they were able to to bring him down uh, fairly easily. Of course, if you have legendaries, use them. If you have Scylla to arrogance, you know. They can bring down the boss a lot faster. So here's just to give you an idea of the type of damage that we're able to do. Bulka did a very, a fairly good job on the la on the right hand side. So the Wrath, remember Wrath had the boss, so he had to do some damage in that regard. And at least I got up some boost from Abomination when I was able to bring him in uh, in that fight, just to give us an extra the necessary uh, damage that we needed to do as quickly as possible. So here I went through my roster really quick just to show you the builds that I that I that I had on on the heroes that I used and I I really tried to get the gear at a at a stage where it wasn't too demanding. It, you know, it's, it, I don't think that you're going to have a hard time meeting some of the thresholds. So for example with Volka here she had about 12,000 attacks, so I just left it at that. I didn't try to increase it at all. You can see the amount of crit rate is really low. This is one of the uh, the very first builds that I did on her, and I just decided to leave it. You know, don't improve it at all. Uh, and then you saw that what she was able to do for that, that short period of time. I bet if I would have put more crit rate on her, she would have cleared those boulders a, a lot faster and you wouldn't have needed somebody like mary or put up a mage or anything to, to to do more damage she would have done the job herself just as well but uh since i recorded this video to now she has been rebuilt and now she's being uh, used in other areas of the game uh this is my abomination as i recorded this again about fifteen thousand attack he had about did i scroll uh, scroll down here we're going to see the crit rate. Oh, okay, so 76% crit and 251 uh, critical damage. Some rate of re regeneration, not a whole lot. But he was able to, to do the damage that he needed. Here's my Wrath, the build of Wrath at that time. I recorded this, 7,500 attack. Make sure you give him some HP so he can make it. Um, especially if yours is not... Uh, awaken five times because remember he does get that heal a uh, life steal uh, from damage if he is awakened five times but if you're bringing him with volka as uh, her passive will also allow him to heal and he only had 42 percent crit rate and 174 per crit damage but he was able to handle the the boulders and the boss fairly well it's all about trying to survive it as well so protect them as much as you can with your healers okay so that's example of the, of the fighters okay so here is uh, medan medan i give her about thirty-four thousand hp with uh 1700 defense now with her, I kind of made it. I made it a point to give her a little bit more of a healing effect and some rage regeneration, in just to make sure that that side was really uh, well covered. Thirsty much. Okay, here's uh, Bortex. Uh, he is about same stats as Madan. Uh, I didn't really have too much uh, rage regeneration, yeah, and healing effect on him. He was just—I just make sure that he survived the pounding as much as he could, so he could give us the I shields if at all possible. Now, Nisande, she's an attack-based healer, so she is going to 
uh, have a little bit more attack than the other two. Uh, but that's kind of the build that I decided to use on her for uh, this example here. If you do have Sadie, use Sadie. If you have Elowen, use Elowen as attack base healers. They will do the damage just as good. Now, uh, for this example here, I just want you to notice the Baron. Uh, when I went to look for him and I noticed him in this gear, I said, I have to try him in this gear. Because I just have to show you guys that he can do the job just as good in, 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 in this gear. And he certainly held off as long as he had the protection uh, from, from our healers. You can see the amount of um, health is about 68,000. And the defense he has about 5,000. So he is tanky. Even with the gear that he had on. And trust me, since the recording of this little clip, he has been rebuilt for uh, future content Make in the game. Redemption. Okay, Oleg. Uh, again, 70,000 HP, 5,000 uh, defense. So make him as tanky as possible. And, uh, you know, um, some attack speed. I did not mean to load it up, but he has some at least, so he can do some, some damage. And now, remember, if you bring in Bolka in and you're making, getting their attack, basic attack on, they're healing from that as well. So that that benefits them. And you can see that I even forgot to 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 roll um, Bengal uh, up to, to sixteen. So that 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 that. He did a fairly good job with the stats that he had. So that will pretty much do it for this presentation. If you have any questions, please post them down below uh, for any suggestions based on your roster. If you liked and appreciated the content of this video, please hit like and subscribe. And I will see you all next time on another Watcher of Realms video. Take.